So with the isothermal process, the, the by definition, what it means is change in temperature is zero. And that immediately implies the change in internal energy is zero. That's because um, from our earlier expressions we were relying on from equipartition theorem, the change in internal energy is the degree of freedom over two times n Boltzmann constant times change in temperature. Isothermal means no change in temperature, so no change in internal energy. N is usually taken to be constant. So I get that right away just from reading the question. Uh, in change in internal, internal energy is zero. Then that also, wait, where am I supposed to be? I think that's right. And um, that also gives you an immediate relationship between the heat transfer and the work done. And um, this is what I was foreshadowing. You use the first law of thermodynamics that says change in internal energy is equal to net heat transfer minus work done by the system. So if the change in internal energy is zero, you can see that um, that the amount of heat transfer is work equal to work done by the system. I think this is the one that's conceptually the cleanest. You know, work done by the system will tend to decrease the system's energies, but the internal energy change being zero means that's not happening. So in order for energy conservation to hold, that means same amount of energy has to come in by heat in the same amount that goes out by work done. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna hold off on this until I have calculated the work. And now I have to calculate the work. With the isothermal expansion, unless you happen to have the formula memorized, you have to do the um, integral because, um, so this is the general expression for work done, infinitesimal amount of work done in any process is pressure times the infinitesimal change in volume. With the isothermal processes, when you look at the ideal gas law, PV equals N KVT, you can see that if the temperature stays the same, then if there's change in volume, then there has to be change in pressure. So pressure is a function of volume. So you have to express that and then integrate it from the uh, initial to final position, uh, final state to get the total amount of work done. And so you just have to do the integral. So I can use the ideal gas law to get pressure as a function of volume, just to solve this for um, N K B T over V. Well, um, since I'm noticing this now, let me highlight it now. So just looking at this expression, I'm noticing, hey, I don't know what N is. I ne was never given N. So this, I'm going to have to rewrite um, using ideal guess law again, because what we can state is uh, this, that initial pressure times final, sorry, initial volume both of which we know, we know the initial volume and initial pressure, that is equal to NKB times initial temperature. Now this is an isothermal process. This uh, initial temperature happens to be the temperature throughout the entire process. So this uh, NKBT, I'll have to rewrite it in terms of the product of the pressure and volume. So PI, VI divided by V. This is a constant. This is the variable of integration. So yeah, so let me set that up here. Um, this integrand is equal to um, P, so here, pressure is a function of volume. So initial pressure times initial volume divided by V as the variable of integration, dV, these two match good and I have initial volume to final volume. Um, staring at this expression for a while, I notice that uh, this I can factor out because they're constant. So I basically have one over X integral. The antiderivative for that is natural log. So this should be PI times VI times, and 
uh, let me go through steps in detail here. Um, so the so the the antiderivative of one over v is natural log of v, and to finish this definite integral, you evaluate it at the limit, upper limit minus the lower limit. So upper limit minus the lower limit. So when you write this out, you are going to get ln v final minus ln v initial. And I guess technically at this point you can plug in the numbers, ignore the fact that you have no idea what natural log of cubic meter is. <laughs> but I think it's a good practice to get into habits of um, algebraically simplifying the setup. This uh, expression here, it can be simplified using logarithm algebra rules. Um, or regarding logarithm algebra, there are really only two rules you need to know. One rule is um, how to handle um, add the added terms. So not natural log of A plus natural log of B. You can combine these into a single logarithm, natural log of A times B. And um, how to handle a um, term that's raised to, to a power. So if you have natural log of X raised to power N, that's equal to N times natural log of X. And uh, this N can actually be any uh, real number. So one way to kind of um, rewrite this is to say, okay, that is a natural log of vi raised to power minus one. And then I have natural log of v final plus this. So applying this rule, I'm going to get uh, everything together, natural log of v final times um, vi raised to power of minus one or write it the normal way as a v final over v initial. So you get this ratio, unit two will nicely cancel out and you only have to worry about natural log of a unitless number, which is how it always should be. So uh, let me, yeah, let me plug in the numbers here. I think I have everything for plugging in numbers here because uh, for the work done, I have initial pressure times the fine initial volume times the natural log of the ratio of the two volumes, V final over V initial. So I think I can do that in the calculator. Let me do the natural log first. It, um, it's always kind of avoids the mistakes to do the more complicated expressions first. So V final is 0.48 cubic meter divide by V initial 0 0.05 cubic meter. Take the natural log of that, that's ln here. Okay, multiply that by the product of initial pressure, 260 kilopascal, 260 times 10 to the power of three pascal times the initial volume, 0 0.05 cubic meter. And I kept everything in basic SI units, so I should get the answer in joules. So 29,000, about 400 joules. 29,400 joules. And the heat transfer should be exactly the same. So that they, when you calculate this terms or difference, you get zero. So that's it, isothermal process. <laughs>